Hey everybody, this is Christopher Small with CMS Law Firm. We do estate planning, we do probate, we do it well. Today, I wanna to talk to you about three ways that you can contest a will with an important story intertwined. All right, uh, before I get to that though, if you have questions about this or questions about anything else related to estate planning or probate, and you wanna to talk to me over the phone or in person for free, you can go to estatemeeting.com, set up a time, and uh, I'll chat with you, estatemeeting.com. Okay, this, as pretty much all of my other videos or in, in um, podcasts, however you listen to me, this comes from a, a conversation I had today with a potential client who was quite upset because they had been cut out of the will of somebody that was important to them, someone that they thought would be giving them something, someone that... Um, typically does give something to this person, not to give too many details, and they were upset. And they wanted to know if they could contest the will. Uh, the, a little bit of a background, um, this will was relatively old, it's about 10 years old. Um, the person that passed away, passed away from a, a, a sort of a self-inflicted um, disease. And the person that I was talking to was quite surprised to find out that they had been essentially cut out of of receiving anything from the will, okay? And I told her, look, first things first, um, contesting a will is very, very difficult. Um, you have to have proof, obviously, and this proof can be very difficult to get, and you'll see when I begin to describe what it takes to contest a will. There are basically three ways that you can contest a will. Way number one is that it was not executed properly, okay? So if you, for example, the will is not witnessed correctly, okay? Um, then there's a potential that it it's no good. It's simply not a will because it hasn't been executed properly. If it doesn't have all the elements that are required, it could it could be it could um, be incomplete and it could not be a will. I've seen this happen with clients before, where entire um, parts of a family have been cut out because a will was not was no good. It was an invalid will, and when that happens, um, the the wishes of the person making the will are not. Uh, um, really taken into account. You just go by what the state says. Okay, so that's number one. Number two is if, if the person making the will lacked the capacity to sign the will. Essentially what this mean is, means is, did they understand what they were doing at the time that they were signing the will? Capacity could be lacking for several different reasons. It could be sort of mental lack of clarity, uh, dementia, Alzheimer's, these things. It could be it could be self-imposed mental lack of clarity, alcoholism, under the influence of drugs, things like that. It could be medical lack of clarity, right? It could be you're in a coma and somebody signs for you. That could happen, I guess. So if you can demonstrate lack of capacity to execute the will at the time it was signed, then that will would be invalid. The third way that you can um, argue or the third way that you can invalidate a will is by demonstrating um, duress. Duress would be like, Somebody is holding a gun at me and saying, look, sign this will or I'm going to shoot you. If you sign the will in that instance, then obviously the will is no good. So demonstrating those things, though, um, the burden of proof is on the person um, bringing the accusation, which means you've got to come up with something. you got to bring something to the table. You can't just, make, you can't just say you thought they were under the influence or you can't just say you thought they lacked capacity. You have to provide demonstrable evidence of that kind of a thing, okay? Those are the three ways you can contest the will. Now, let's talk about the underlying lesson that's intertwined in all of this. Um, this will was from 2011, okay, that I was talking about, okay? To give you just actual details, I guess it was 10 years old. 2011 is how old it was. That's a long period of time. You know, things change. Choices can, can change from what happens 10 years ago to what happens today. If you ever created a will and it's it's 10 years old, if it's three years old, four years old, please, please go look at your will. Go look at whatever else you've done. Look at your beneficiary designations. Those are also important and often overlooked. And make sure that they still align with your idea of how you want to distribute your assets when you're gone. If it's not, then don't wait to change it, okay? We, we just don't know when something is gonna happen to us. So don't sit on the sidelines thinking to yourself, oh, I should update my will, oh, I should update my beneficiary designations, go and do it. You never know when you're gonna die, and if you really wanna take care of the people that you want to take care of, your documents need to be in order. 
So that's like the mini lesson intertwined with this will contest is that from the looks of things on the outside, it appears that maybe um, um, this, this person did want to give something to the person that was cut out, but their will says what it says. It is what it is. You follow the paper and uh, there can ought to be consequences from that. Okay, so if you need to update your will, go update it. All right, that's it. Lesson for the day. Thank you for listening so much. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you have a question or a comment, please leave it. If you know someone that needs to hear this, please share it with them. Uh, and if you want to talk more about estate planning or probate and you want to talk to me and you want to do it for free, you can do it in person or over the phone by going to estatemeeting.com. You get access right to my calendar you can sign up for a date and we'll chat. Estate meeting.com. Thank you again so much for your time and uh, can't wait to talk to you again soon.